Hi, I'm Rick Harsh, and this is uh, uh, Cynicism Management by Bori Proper, uh, and it's excerpt number 10 in my series of excerpts from the 12 Corona books extant. I'm going to read to you 34, Finnegan's blog entry number 5, page 415. Damn, I really shouldn't be writing this right now. It'll be one of those blog posts that I type drunk and then regret in the morning. And it's not just because of all the typos and ludicrous sentence structures, which I'll fix tomorrow or the day after anyway. Fortunately, posts can be edited, unlike embarrassing emails. I only write this now because I'm too excited to just go to sleep. I feel like staying up a while longer and having another beer or two while I organize my thoughts. So it's best to write them down. Or screw that. I'm, I'm just making this up because I want to sound nice. Nobody in their right mind is going to read this, so what the hell do I care? The fact is, that damn Portuguese slut is in the room we're supposed to share, entertaining some fucking U.S. Marine cretin. Amalia and her death breath rock and roll bitch have already turned in, and Randy, after smoking a giant goodnight reefer, has nodded off on the couch. So here I am, staring at my laptop in the kitchen with Desideria, while Desideria is having it off with Captain America in our room. Why the fuck didn't I grab a beer from the fridge, head on straight to my room, and dump my Scottish arts on the bed while they were still watching TV, ignoring them altogether? No, I had to stay in the living room with Randy long enough for them to give in to their carnal desires and slip away. You can hear her moaning in the background right now. It's kind of a beeping sound. And where where the fuck does she find these obnoxious morons? Anyhow, sod it. The last thing I want to listen to right now is some stupid American soldier come. And even when he's done, we're probably not going to be discussing Noam Chomsky anytime soon with that piece of inbred white trash U.S. Army garbage. I, you're right, I don't even know him, and already I've passed judgment, but just a couple of words spoken when Amalia and Randy and I finally came home from Boris and Bebas and found Desideria and her soldier boy necking in front of the TV in the living room were more than enough. A hardcore redneck accent and the inescapable fact of what he did for a living were more than enough for me. Thank you very much. Fortunately, Desideria dragged him off to our room before I could get into a nasty, in-depth debate about U.S. foreign policy with the fucking freedom fighter, over which he'd probably most, over which he'd probably most do me in, or something I'd most probably do me in. Well, it's a drunken blog. If I read it as if drunk, what's the deal? You know, no big deal. Nevertheless, I managed to piss him off in the mere five minutes we were forced to spend together. It was rather uncalled for, perhaps. He and his Portuguese strumpet were just sitting there nibbling at peanuts and chatting with us harmlessly before retreating to my room. Soldier Boy acted all polite and friendly, as most Americans will. But there was a short news item on the TV, something about the Yomanian crisis again, and he immediately felt called upon to reveal how the American soldiers were fighting for everybody's freedom and human rights while the other nations just stood by and watched. After that, I rather miraculously managed to squeeze slavery, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, concentration camps for the Japanese, Vietnam, Nicaragua, Chile, Pinochet, and the rest of South America, the Iran-Contra affair, the elusively non-existent Iraqi weapons of mass destruction, the U.S.-sponsored Israeli genocide against the Palestinians, Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo, Afghanistan, as well as Native Americans and reservations, into a single sentence of carefully polished and lovingly gestated anti-American sentiment. Desideria's dildo for the evening seemed pretty much ignorant about everything or just failed to argue its point in a rational and well-substantiated manner. Judging from the unhealthy flush that soon came over his chisel-jawed, buzz-cut, white Republican, Christian fundamentalist face, though, 
He didn't much care for familiarizing himself with my point of view anyway. Mercifully, Desideria kindly decided to jump him before I could really make him unleash the murderous intent that already glimmered quite evidently in his not very sharp gaze. Shite if he reads this crap by any chance, I'm a dead man. So if you find me in a back alley with a couple of extra 5.56 millimeter holes in my poor mangled body, you'll know where to start looking for the prime suspect. Oh well, whatever, I wouldn't worry too much. The fool is probably illiterate anyway.